everyone, welcome to another episode. In today's tutorial, I am going to be teaching you guys how to use HTML entities and as well HTML symbols. But first, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, make sure to subscribe. I'm always uploading new videos with HTML tutorials and much more. Okay, so let's get started. In order to start with HTML entities, you first need to know what an HTML entity is. So it's very simple. An HTML entity is used to replace characters that we cannot input simply into HTML. Let me give me an example of a character which we cannot use in HTML. We have here the character less than, which is this one, and greater than, which is this other character right here. We cannot use this in our source code because if you can see here, in our source code, we use the less than and greater than uh, characters to open tags and close them as well. So these are special characters that we cannot simply include into our HTML code, and we need an entity to insert them into our HTML code. So let me go ahead and show you a couple of examples. Here is one example. We're going to be working with the same HTML code that we have been so far uh, in this HTML course. And we're going to be using the same web page that we have been creating so far. Today, we are going to create an HTML entity within the same web page. Okay, so let me show you a character that we cannot input inside of our code first so that you can see what I'm talking about. Let's go ahead and after the last uh, thing that we input here, which is here is another example of an iframe, uh, which is this code right here. I'm going to give it a couple of spaces so that we can have a little bit more of space right after that. So we're going to add a couple of line breaks. I already show you guys how to do this. So if you do not know how to make sure to check my previous videos. <laughs> okay. Um, so let's go ahead and add like four line breaks here and I'm going to save this and now let's refresh. And as you can see, now we have a bit of space right here. Okay. So let's input now a paragraph inside of this paragraph. Let's say that we want to talk about coding. And let's say that I want to say HTML entities are used to display special characters such as, and then let's go ahead and, and let's uh, input that. And then let's say, or this. So you see here we have HTML, the source code is recognizing or like an HTML tag and it, and it, it close, it closed this for me. And then uh, visual studio code, it automatically closes the tag with slash O R, but I'm not trying to input a tag. I'm just trying to input a symbol there. So let me just erase these that was written down automatically. Um, and I'm going to hit save. Now let's take a look and see how is this going to look like inside of our code. HTML entities are used to displace characters such as this or this. So as you can see, you can see the character. However, inside of our source code is not right. I see here a red alert into my code saying that this is not right. So the right way, the right way to input characters into HTML is by using entities. So instead of just adding these symbols right here, which can create my code to break down the line, we want to use HTML entities. So what do we use to display greater, uh, less than and greater than? Very simple. Let's go back to our HTML entities in W3 schools. Okay, so to display an entity, all we have to do is use and, and then we have to use the name or the number of the entity. So in this case, the less sign, which is this one right here, must be written like this. So let's go ahead and let's write this down. So I'm going to delete those two things that I input there. 
and then we are going to put here such as less than okay and then we close this with semicolon okay and let's go ahead and hit save and now we're going to refresh our page and boom there you go so you see we still have the same character but now we have the character using an entity and we do not have an error displaying into our source code meaning that we are not going to go into the risk of having our code to break because we didn't write it properly okay so how how do we uh write this same character using um the entity number it says here that the entity number is hashtag 60 and we always have to use the end so let's go ahead and try it out so let's do this then hashtag 60 okay and close it with semicolon. If you don't put the semicolon, the, it still will work. It still will reflect the entity. However, it's better if you write the code properly. So make sure that you put the semicolon. Okay, so now I'm going to save this. And in my web page, I should have two of these when I refresh the page. So let's refresh. And there you go. Now I have two. Okay, because remember that in our source code, this right here is the entity name and this right here is the same entity but with the number so you can do either or okay it's optional i'll leave it up to you now let's go ahead and let's add the greater than symbol to add the greater than symbol i'm pretty sure that it'll be gt the name of the entity but let's scroll a little bit down and we have here uh, some useful HTML characters, entities, entities names, and then the entities numbers, okay? So less than is and LT, and now greater than is um, and GT. So let's go ahead and let's put here and GT, which is greater than, and let's save this. Let's go back to our web page and let's refresh. Now that should be reflected here. So let's see, there you go, Susie. So we have added this with the entity name. Now let's add the same greater than character using the number. Okay, so it's hashtag 62. And of course, always you start with and. So and hashtag, hashtag 62, semicolon, save it. And let's refresh the page and we should see another one. There you go. So now we have another greater than character very easy you can go ahead and you can try this out using any other um, entity name here like ampersand <laughs> you see and this is going to also reflect the same character as you can see here amp is the entity name and then the entity number is and and then hashtag 38 so that we can include the ampersand so let's go and do that so that you can see an example i'm going to add a line break here just so you can see let's add a line break and let's just give our paragraph some space so that we can add a couple of symbols a uh, couple of entities here okay so now we're going to add the amp so we're going to add here amp close it and that's with the entity name let's save this and let's hit refresh in our page and there you go we have the end character so um let's go ahead and let's do it now with the number let's go back here we're going to put and and we are going to use hashtag 38 hashtag 38 and let's save this now let's hit refresh and there you go same thing different entity uh number so it's i mean it's the entity name and then the entity number both as i said before will display the same information so go ahead and try it out practice practice a lot this remember that practice is the key Okay, now let's go into HTML symbols. If we go to HTML symbols, it's 
exactly the same just so you know you're still going to add the end character and then we are going to display an entity name and an entity number to uh, display a symbol so let's just go ahead and take a look in how we do that so the html symbol they are not present on your keyboards and you can also add them by using entities so is the same thing as entities html symbols is an entity which is going to display a symbol very self-explanatory now let's go ahead and see a couple of examples here okay the euro symbol is going to be displayed either by adding ampersand euro or and hashtag 8364 or this other scenario okay you can use either the name the decimal or the hexadecimal um, value to go ahead and actually represent the same symbol so let's try it out let's go ahead and use euro okay now we're going to use this other code right here and I am forgetting to input the semicolon make sure to do that every time and let's copy and paste this last hexadecimal entity now we're gonna save this go back to our code and we should see three euro uh, symbols inside of our website afterwards so let's hit refresh and there you go oh of course it's added right next to them it's not added with a line break because I didn't add any line breaks right after um, the the end symbol so let's just go ahead and add one right now so you can see so let's add a line break I'm gonna add it just right after each euro symbol let's save that information and now let's hit enter and there you go one two three easy as that okay so you have three ways to display the euro symbol and you can also use several other symbols supported on html such as this or this or this or this here is the description here is the number here is the entity so you can do a lot with HTML entities if in case you want to go ahead and you want to add a symbol you can also use the entities for that okay so to add uh, symbols I think that you should be clear by now you can go ahead and you can visit W3 schools and learn more about this in here and get a little bit more of examples practice is the key again remember to practice okay um, one more thing that I think you guys should know is that entities also works if you want to add a couple of spaces like this let's say as an example let's let's use this paragraph as an example so let's say that I want to put HTML entities and then I want to give a long space in between HTML entities and the word R okay like a big chunk of space right there if I want to add this big chunk of space there is an entity that is gonna help us out because if I do this right now on my code and I save it and then I just go back to my website and I hit refresh nothing happens here you see each HTML entities are used to blah 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 there is no space here because my source code is not recognizing that I am inputting that big space it's not going to do it so what I have to do is use an HTML entity in order for me to create this okay so what is that entity you might be wondering let's go back to HTML entities and we're going to scroll a little bit down here and we are going to be using the non breaking space entity which is ampersand nbsp okay so let's go ahead and use that so if i go ahead and add and non bsp okay or you can also use this instead non-breaking space either or will work visual studio code is just giving me um, some options so I'm going to use the one that we have in the example now here I am just adding one space to my code so if I hit save you're going to see now that uh, after HTML entities I'm going to have a little bit a little bit of space there so let's hit refresh 
And there you go, the space is a little bit, it's a little bit bigger, but let's go ahead and add a couple of these in here. So I'm just going, I'm just going to copy and paste a couple of these here. So let's just, let's just do a whole bunch of them. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to add a couple of them in there. Now let me save this and let's hit refresh. So now you see a huge space right after entities and the word R. Pretty cool, right? Okay, so that's what you can do with HTML entities. Remember, if you have a question, you can leave them in the comment section below and I'll be more than happy to answer that for you. So that's it for this video today, guys. I hope that you liked it. I hope that you learned a lot with HTML entities. If you like this video, remember to give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, make sure to subscribe to my channel to check out new videos coming up with more HTML tutorials, web development information, and much more. And as always, remember, you can always ask Lixie. Bye everyone, see you again in the next episode.